In the aftermath of the dollar flu, vital supplies being delivered across the US were severely hampered. But truckies of the old America would band together for the greater good of the rising settlements across the country. However, with these factions of Hero Freighties, there would also be a growing fleet that have realized the power of their situation and have decided instead to use it to their advantage. Over 80% of all communities in the US rely exclusively on trucks to deliver all of their fuel, clothing, medicine and consumer goods. The Romas were some of the men and women who hauled these goods from state to state in their large freight vehicles. They transported materials, livestock, machinery, liquids, general freight and sometimes hazardous substances. The hours could be incredibly long and in conditions that were often stressful including poor weather and heavy traffic. Repeatedly, they were required to travel long distances, which meant spending many a night far away from home. Highly skilled in handling their large vehicles, they also possessed some basic knowledge of the mechanics of their trucks and how to maintain them. In the novel written by Thomas Parrott, The Division Recruited, the Romans were the ones identified as running the northern routes. In addition, they are now also in control of the Cumberland Gap Tunnel that carries the US Route 25E under the Cumberland Gap National Historical Park. The importance of this particular tunnel is because it represents one of the only safe ways for large vehicles to pass through the mountains between Kentucky, Tennessee and Virginia after the Green Poison outbreak. This passage passes through the Cumberland Mountains and consists of two separate bores which carry four lanes of traffic. Until recently, this tunnel was firmly in the hands of the non-hostile faction called Freighties. But now, the Romas are the ones in charge. A rogue army of truckers using the might of commerce to seize control. Some people decided it was time to become the worst possible version of themselves when they realized the world was ending. And the Romas are some of these people. Essentially they are smugglers and they are aspiring to be the kings of the areas under their control. They bring much needed supplies to people, but as soon as these same people become reliant on them, they've got them by the throat and they hold on tight. Enslavement under any other name. As long as the ones they supply to follow their explicit instructions to a T, they will provide them with just enough to keep them going. And if they don't, if they dare to rebel against them, they'll take what they want anyhow, anyway, and destroy everything else. Their attire consists of leather, bandanas, worn denim, and boots, similar in resemblance to a classic motorcycle gang. The way in which the Romans act is also quite interesting as they tend to carry themselves in a similar manner to the true sons. A lot of them have an arrogant and exaggerated swagger to their walk, and they love to gloat when they are victorious, and they know they have won. They have turned their trucks into weapons, and have applied rough panelling to better protect their vehicles. These cargo carriers have been modified into improvised fighting machines, with guns mounted on them, and some are even equipped with machine gun nests and small artillery pieces. They also carry a variety of small arms, mostly SMGs and assault rifles, along with the occasional M40 rifle. In the story of Recruited, Division Agents Myra, Brenda and Leo would learn of the Romas while heading southwest from Maryland on their mission of locating the reason behind supplies not being delivered to communities down the eastern side of the country. Up to 6 million people who managed to survive the green poison are now facing an impending famine. Approaching a group of well-armed truck drivers, calling themselves Freighties, they would find out that similar to the Freighties, the Romas are former truckies. The Romas and the Freighties have had a hostile relationship since the country first began to fall apart. But it was more of a cold war, where the Freighties ran the southern routes and the Romas ran the north. Like the Freighties, they too would run supplies out to communities, but their methods were a little different. The Freighties were really only experiencing small skirmishes with them to begin with, and they were certainly able to hold their own. But eventually the Romas started pushing south. At first, it was just small probing raids. They'd be in and out before the Freighties could react, like they knew they were coming. 
Eventually, the rumors would come in force. It was now obvious that they knew everything about how the Freighties were formed and how they moved, and the Freighties had been on the back foot ever since. Now, the Romans have set up a barricade at the Cumberland Gap Tunnel. If they were to help the division agents with supplying food to the East Coast, they would need help removing this Roma threat. The agents agreed to help the Freighties, but admitted that something didn't seem quite right with what they were saying about the Romans. It was like they were getting intel from somewhere within the Freighties camp, or perhaps something much worse. Division agents have a key piece of kit that helps them be one step ahead, Isaac. This AI assistant provides access to satellites, radar, and so much more. It was beginning to sound like there was a rogue agent within the Roman ranks. It would take a couple of days for the Freighties to get their attack party ready, but that was okay as this would give the agents time to scope the place out and prepare for the upcoming battle. On the day of the planned attack, all seemed calm. The Romans seemed to be going about their usual duties at the blockade. There were more than 20 trucks with many armed men, more than enough to stop the Freighties on any normal day. But this wasn't any normal day. Today, they had a new weapon, three division agents, along with their state-of-the-art SHD gear. The agents were able to use their tech and surprise to their advantage, quickly taking out a number of trucks via sticky bombs before the Romers had any idea of what was happening. Next, several turrets that had been deployed the night before popped into action, spraying the barricade with AI-driven machine gun fire and user-identified sniper rounds. At this point, the Freighties had also arrived and were pushing forward with trucks as well as a number of offensive weapons ranging from small arms fire to heavy machine gun platforms to mortars being fired from the rear. It wasn't long before the entirety of the valley was swallowed by the fury of a pitched battle. The Roma's lack of training and discipline could be seen across the battlefield as burning figures bailed out of their ravaged trucks. Men and women at the barricade, trying to establish where this attack was coming from, were unleashing fire in all directions. Some of them around the perimeter would be cut down by friendly fire in the chaos. Roma and Freighties alike died in droves as the two fleets clashed. The agents took a second to scan the battlefield and observe how everything was playing out. The Freighties were ahead, having taken advantage of the early wins the agents had given them. But suddenly, they noticed something was off. The turrets had stopped firing, but they weren't out of ammo. They were reassessing their targets. Their attention seemed to be now focused on the Freighties. Someone had hijacked and turned them against them. The agents were able to neutralize the turrets, as well as a drone that had opened fire on them during the conflict. But before they were able to question what was happening, a familiar voice echoed around them. An agent, recently turned rogue, made her presence known. This agent was Rowan. She was once a part of their cell, a traitor. Coming from the badly damaged drone, Rowan antagonized them, mocking them for their predictability, and stating that although the Romans had lost this battle, that the agents had done more in this short period of time than she was able to do over the last several months to show the Romans that the Division were the real enemy. Rowan was an agent that went too far. She weaponized a sample of the green poison. This drew the attention of Arankina's rogue agents. Rowan then used the weaponized sample against an encampment of True Sons by poisoning their water supply. Rowan was incorrectly informed by one of the agents that her family was killed by the True Sons, when in reality, they were imprisoned on Roosevelt Island and were killed in the crossfire when the division engaged against the growing hostile faction of outcasts. However, Rowan's actions against the True Sons had met the approval of the outcasts, and with their leader having now been eliminated by the division, they were in need of someone new to follow to give them a purpose. After the success of the battle at Cumberland Gap, the Freighties were happy to help with supplying the eastern communities. While appreciative, after the discovery of Rowan made them realize that the true threat was what Rowan had planned for the division itself. This incursion for her was more about gaining the trust of the Romers. Now, she had the Romers, the outcasts, and a plan to attack one of the division's cores. Each SHD core contains a large amount of classified information weapon designs, satellite feeds, 
the names and location of division cells and all sorts of other important intel. Protecting these was of utmost importance for the division. Now, I'm going to cut off the story here. I've already delved far deeper into the division recruited story than I'd planned to. Summing up, three division agents managed to get to the core located in Kansas, but what met them there was a battle that had been raging on since long before they'd arrived. Involved were the Romers, the Outcasts, and the rogue agent, Rowan. The three agents would of course join the fight against odds far tilted out of their favour, but this was for reasons far beyond themselves. If this facility was to fall, it wouldn't just affect them, it would hamper the efforts of hundreds of SHD agents across the US. Perhaps later on I'll dive deeper into the events around the division recruited, but for now I think this gives a pretty good understanding of who the Romers are and what they've been doing. Regarding the Black Tusk and how they've been using the Romers as of Season 10, I can't really be sure at this point, but I believe the recruited story to have been playing out alongside the events of Season 10. But even if they weren't, I still see them as a faction that is still active within the Midwest. I can actually feel Thomas Parrott cringing at my attempts to describe this faction and how their part in the story has played out. I really don't think I've done it justice in comparison to his work in the book. So if I have made you intrigued with this video at all, and you'd like to know more, I'd really suggest picking up The Division Recruited. I'll place a link to this in the description. And while I'm on that, there is a reason I didn't cover these in the recent video where I spoke about the Season 10 target, Lucky. I had left it open and purposely didn't delve into who the Romers were when they were mentioned. For much the same reason that I don't cover leaks. But I managed to get hold of Thomas and Lauren from Ubisoft and I was given the all clear, so here we are. People put a lot of work into these stories and out of respect for them I don't want to be the reason they get spoiled early on. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and Extremis Mullis, Extrema Remedia.